Hello, we are about to set to and make a coffee and walnut tray bake cake uh, dedicated for my granddaughter Imogen. Uh, perfect way for her to learn exactly how to do it. Okay, let's get started. Turn on the scales first, digital scales. Make sure we set it, let's get it right. And it's got to be, I'm working in ounces because I'm very old fashioned. There's plenty of conversion charts out there to make sure you can set it into grams. Okay, first process, let's get our ingredients weighed out. First thing we're going to be doing is good old stock, it's very old fashioned. A lot of people today using butter and I do use butter for a lot of cakes but I do find in this particular case butter is a lot heavier than a good uh, margarine or baking margarine there's a lot out there there's a lot of um, floras olive oil bakes all do the same thing it's basically the fat within the sponge so okay we're going for eight ounces I'm doing eight eight and eight of everything that's eight of butter, flora, whatever, eight of caster sugar and eight of self-raising flour. So just make sure we get those right. That is ounces again. When I get this onto my website, I will actually put a conversion up for those of you who are working in um, grams. I'm going to weigh the flour out now, even though I'm not going to use it at this moment. I'm using self-raising flour. I do like to use a good quality flour. I do find the essential flours, I don't know. But I don't know what it is about them, they just don't seem to get the same results. Okay, again, there's that. Right, I'm going to take that off the scales, the scales will turn off. First job is we're going to mix this dry mixture of caster sugar and the stock margarine into a really, it wants to be light, creamy and fluffy. I am going to use electric peters with this. In the very old days we didn't have such luxuries and it would be down to a balloon musk or a wooden spoon. This is noisy so I'll come back in a second. Okay, are we on? Right, um, that's as far as I go with the electric beaters now. The one thing that happens with sponge cakes is if you overbeat them with electric beaters, you actually can knock out the air that you want you need to make a good sponge. So let's take those out of the equation. Put those over there. That is the same. Always a nice clean cloth ready to wipe your hands with. Can start cracking up for its standard um, baking requirement is two ounces of flour and sugar and butter to a two ounce egg. 
so that would be four eggs. I always find that today's eggs, and this is supposed to be a large, if I weighed this, I think this would come in at one and a half ounces. So today I'm going to use five eggs. This again will be in the recipe online. I will eventually get it all typed up and put on for you. The eggs do not want to be straight out of the fridge. Cold eggs, disaster when it comes to baking. Everything should be warm, room temperature. And your oven, at uh, this point in time, one of the first things I actually did when I walked in the kitchen was turn my oven on and it's heating up to, um, to about 180. And the cake will go into the centre of the oven. Right, we've got a fork. And just whisk those together. I'm not actually whisking with an electric whisker. You can light everything. When it comes to making cakes, you can overbeat your eggs. It's not necessary. It's not at this stage. It's not about the stage that mattered was putting your butter and your sugar together. That's where you need to get a nice airy feel to it. Okay, that's the eggs done. We are going to incorporate very slowly so it doesn't split hopefully. The eggs and the flour with a wooden spoon. So a little bit of egg to the flour and let's just bring that together. Muffins, if you're making um, cupcakes, muffins, totally different mixture, much more of a batter, it's thin. You can be rough with those mixtures. You can bung it all in a, a blender, a um, food mixer, which I will be doing some of those um, at some point, and we'll do a video of those because they are super easy, super quick, but they're a totally different feel to a sponge cake. Right, at this point, we're sort of round about halfway in with our flour, halfway in with our eggs. We've got to just be careful we don't get a split going on. So we just beat it a little bit harder. Again, the wooden spoon is so works so well for this. You're gentle with your mix. This is where we're going to put the good old-fashioned, uh, you may never have seen this, camp coffee. Um this is you can't go wrong for a coffee cake with this it's the right intensity of flavor it's not too strong it's not too bitter it just works so well for a coffee cake right and this is right let me show you guys this is a tablespoon for meant to be serving at the table this is a dessert spoon a lot of people when they're baking pick up this and say that's a tablespoon it is not Quantity wise, that's got probably another five mils in it. I think that's probably about 30 to 35 mils. Your um, dessert spoon is only about 20 to 25. So you do need to get those things right. I'm going to put three, maybe four um, tablespoonfuls of coffee essence into this mix. Yeah, that was three. So I'm going to go for another one. <coughs> I do like the coffee cake to taste of coffee. New bottle. You can pick these up at Sainsbury's, Tesco's. Waitrose occasionally have it, but they don't get it quite as much as often as Tesco's. get some flour into that again we don't want things splitting if your cake mix does split don't panic it just generally means that when you do get it into the oven sometimes you get more of a hard type of like a little bit of a crusty crustiness on it um, which when you're going to cover it with buttercream doesn't matter that much anyway 
but it's better if you can avoid it it's always better yeah a lot of people would sieve this in but this is a fairly dense with it being a coffee and walnut cake it's going to be quite a heavier cake so i'm not worrying about sieving it in if you are going to sieve your flour in though take it high let the air pull through the flour and it gives another lightness like if this was going to be a victoria sponge cake with jam and cream in the middle yes i'd want it super light and yes i would be sieving the flour right last job is our walnuts to go in i'm not putting a lot of walnuts in because i like to put the walnuts on the top i like people to see the walnuts but i also like to take a few and just crumble them up so you get a mixture of sizes. If you blitz them, I find the blitz really quite small. And that to me is not what a nut cake is about. I like to be able to get a chunk of nuts in it. And especially a walnut. A walnut cooks quite softly. So that's just a nice handful. If you can get walnut bits perfect for cooking with. Because you do pay more for full, whole walnuts and walnut halves. Works out a little bit cheaper. You can put, I haven't weighed these out, I just guess it. It's how many nuts you like in your cake, basically. And as we love our nuts, as you can see, I'm putting a few in. Okay, just blend that through. Right, that's going into my baking tin, which I've already lined with baking parchment. It's been greased around first, and then the baking parchment put well into those areas. And we'll just pour this batter in. going to get my spatula I normally do this cake in two uh, eight inch round tins and sandwich them together but when you're cooking it to freeze it or store it I do like a tray bake it can just be iced on the top put into nice sized pieces and frozen so it makes it makes it for a better deal in your freezer but if it was an afternoon tea then it would be round okay that's going into the oven Just adjusting it because it's felt a little bit hot and that should be about 20 minutes cake timing is very difficult different because everybody's oven is slightly different so I'll also say 20 minutes it may be 25 minutes so judge it as I look at it wants to be nice and spongy to the touch it's essential the first 15 minutes you are not tempted to open the door just ignore it get on with what you're doing but after 15 minutes try and have a look through your glass if you can see in it's rising well it's looking good give it five minutes more after 20 then you can do the press test if your finger doesn't bounce back or it feels or the tin wobbles and you can see it's loose in the middle that makes you means your mix is not cooked leave it give it another three to four minutes just keep an eye on it and then it needs to stand when you bring it out leave it five ten minutes in the tin sat there cooling down because you can't handle it you burn yourselves then if you have a wire rack, tip it upside down, put it onto the wire rack and gently remove the paper and you should get a nice finish. Fingers crossed that turns out. Hi, I thought while the cake's cooking, we'll crack on and make the coffee buttercream. Um, there's no great difficulty with making buttercream. It's very, very simple. I don't, again, I don't use mix or electric mixer, but you can do if you wish. 
you do if you're going to use an electric mixer I would suggest you have a big bowl because icing sugar being very light will fly all over your kitchen once you put the mixers in it. So in this bowl we've got uh, four ounces of icing sugar. I'm not even going to I would say two ounces of butter to the four ounces of icing sugar but I'm not even going to measure it. You don't need to make a good buttercream you don't need an awful lot of butter. So I'm just putting that's the maximum butter nice English uh, butter and I'm just going to work it into the icing sugar very simple very straightforward obviously you must use really soft room temperature butter to do this process um, I'm only going to ice the top of this cake so I'm not going to need I think it's I, I don't like great big thick buttercream where you get really stuck with the stuff so it's just the, the cake itself is just going to have a nice covering on the top and then dressed with walnuts. So we're just literally taking this so it blends into the icing sugar. You can feel the butter mixing in and it starts to come together. This is a good job to be doing while your cake's cooking. It can then just go into the fridge and sit there till your cake's cool and you're waiting to um, put this on the top. Now I'm going to just add the coffee. I've got no big lumps of butter in there. It's all gone to just blended into the icing sugar itself. I would say one tablespoon for this. I don't need to measure it. That's about a tablespoon for. You can tell when you're making a coffee icing you can very quickly tell if you haven't put enough of the coffee essence in. You get the wrong colour. It just looks too pale and doesn't come to, doesn't look very nice at all. So that's going in. I'm going to add a little bit more. And in a minute, the magic will start to happen. Where it turns from lumps into a creamy buttercream. A little spudge more, that's all I'm going to use. Now, secret ingredients. I use a little bit of double cream. If I haven't got double cream, then it's milk. And this was how my aunt made her buttercream. Uh, grew up on farms up in Yorkshire. She made the best ever buttercream. But there again, it was from cows. Um, the cream was taken off the milk first thing on the morning and brought into the farm kitchen. Real treat. She did keep it usually to go up into her cakes and it was always wonderful. Right, let's get a little bit of liquid into there. Okay, a little splash of double cream into here. You won't need a lot. Now we start working it. you can see you've got a nice coffee colour coming together now. Now this is where you do have to work your butter and sugar, making sure that you get any lumps that you've missed, you want them out, you want a smooth mix. This is also the point that if you feel there's more butter than sugar in there, you could taste it at this point. I can tell from the mix that the quantities are right, it's stiff. If there was more butter and less sugar, it wouldn't be as stiff. It's the sugar that's stiffening. I'm going to add a touch more cream to it. So. Now I'm going to taste it. Clean teaspoon. That's 
absolutely delicious. And if you're not careful, if the kids are in the kitchen, they'll eat the lot. So <laughs> keep your eyes on it, make sure you know where you're putting it. And that is ready to work with on your cake. So now we can just put that in the fridge. I wouldn't put it in the fridge really for too long because you don't want that setting. If it sets, just put um, a little bit more cream or a little bit of milk in, beat it up again. But at the moment, I'm just going to cover it with some cling film, leave it in here so it stays at room temperature, which makes it really good to spread on your cake. Because once it does settle, it does set off, but that's kind of nice because you can eat your cake with that lovely creamy texture without getting your fingers all stuck up. So, uh, hoping the cake turns out now. there to cool five ten minutes and then I'll turn it out onto the rack okay right okay cakes out the oven cakes cool uh, it's set cooked lovely just as I expected it's a lovely dark deep color coffee is just right I've just given the buttercream a quick stir around it's just been stood here waiting for the cake coming out of the oven so let's now get this on the top and get this finished and then I'll leave it again to stand before I actually cut it into pieces. Some's going in the freezer and some I think uh, my husband and I'll eat tonight. Okay. That's... This is just, it's very basic. There's no need. Homemade cakes shouldn't, in my mind, look too, um, too professional. Unless, of course, it's a special occasion. And then, of course, you got to put the work in but this really this type of cake is just a tea time treat oops don't do that i've just lifted the top of the cake off just smooth it down no one will ever be any the wiser buttercream can hide a multitude of sins Okay, I'm going to change to a finer knife now. Just get rid of the spoon into the sink. Palette knife's great for just initially dumping it all on, but you need to have a small working knife. A bit of shadow going on there. Okay. Okay, I'm just going to make it look a little bit more dressed before I put the um, walnuts on the top. All I'm going to do again, so old fashioned, so simple. We're just putting some swirls over it. And again, the other way. That's all you need to do. And now we're just going to go around with some. I like to think each piece will get a nice piece of walnut.
friend of mine puts chocolate coffee beans on hers because she has hers just as a coffee cake. Which is kind of a nice idea, but we love nuts. And if you see any spaces, just shove a few extra nuts on. That's it folks, I think you get the idea and from that it will then be cut into squares and you'll get quite quite a few nice sized bites of cake after that and as I said it will freeze extremely well as well, it freezes up to six weeks. Do date it if you, if you actually cut it into squares and put it in any plastic boxes, make sure you put a date on though because um, if like me, I yeah, throw things in the freezer, I then totally forget how long we've been there and I get them out and they're not pleasant. So by putting the date on them, we avoid any health issues. Okay, hope you enjoy it. Coffee and walnut cake, the old fashioned way. <laughs>